In this video, we're going to show you how to use the two rail sweep tool. So let's just go to file, close, and we're going to open the open rail example. And we'll just go ahead and tile our windows. So to access the two rail sweep, we come under the modeling tools within the design tab, and we're going to click on this icon here, and that's going to open up the two rail sweep tool. So in order for you to create a two rail sweep, you need two rails, so two vectors for example we're going to look at these vectors here and then you need a cross section and what we're going to do is we're just going to sweep a cross section between two rails so we're going to click one vector first shift and click another vector and then we're going to come over here and use this option to use selection now the vector you clicked first will always be your red rail and then the second one is your green rail. We can see we've got two start points here, and then that's telling us that these are the start points, and then our cross sections are going to travel down in this direction, and you can see that using those handy arrows. So next up, we need to specify a cross section. Okay, so cross section is always an open vector, so we'll go with this one here. And then what we can do is we could just go ahead and press apply to take a look at the effect of that. And then over in the 3D view, we can see what that looks like. And so what's happened is it's took this vector here and it started it over here and it swept it between the two vector rails in order for us to create this shape. And then in terms of the height of this, this is all dependent on some options that we've got available in the form. So here we've got scale cross sections with width. And so what that's doing is it's taking this cross section and it's scaling it between the width of the two rails. And so where we have a much bigger gap between the two rails, we have a much higher shape. And then where two rails come closer together, we have a much shallower shape, which is evident here in our 3D view. So let's just put that back to the top. Marking down the form, you can then give that a name. We can just call that one sweep. And you can set how you want this component to combine with any other components that you have in your job. In this case, we'll just set that to add. And then you could go ahead and press apply. And if you wanted to start a new component, you could do that. If not, you can close out of the form. And now you've created your first shape with the two rail sweep. And it's worth noting now that now that you've created that shape, it has no relation to the vectors that it was originally created from. And so you can move that around and make further edits to this if you wanted to. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and delete it. And then we'll just go back into the two rail sweep form. So again, let's just select our rails, use selection, and then we'll apply this cross section here and then go ahead and press apply. Now, if we undraw the option to scale cross sections with the width, and then if we just come over here and then if we just apply that, we'll see that what actually happens is the height just remains consistent through the two rails based on the height of our vector. And if we wanted to alter the height and make it to a precise height that's not based on the vector, we can always use this option here to scale it to an exact height, where we can just enter values just in one inch there, now at a quarter of an inch. And we're just going to undraw that option and let the software scale it against the actual height of the vector itself. So we'll switch that back to scale cross sections with width and then press apply. You can see we've got lots of different options there to adjust the height uh, in order for you to get all sorts of different results. So let's just go ahead and we'll reset that. We're going to clear our rails and we can start afresh. So again, we're going to click on this vector here, shift and click on this vector here and use this option to use selection. Now we're going to look at the effect of applying more than one cross section. So this time I'm going to select this cross section here and I'm going to click this time on this start point over here and you'll see that we've got a red dot here, we've got a red dot here and that's just telling us that this cross section is being hung from this part of the cross section here onto this rail and you can see it's we've got one on the end over here, but we can swap the end point for a totally different cross section if we wanted to. So in this case, we're going to take this vector here and I'm going to apply it to this rail over here. And you can see it's now changed to a yellow square that matches the yellow square on our cross section here. And that's telling us that this part here is going to be hung here. So this sharp angle here will be on the right hand side. 
And so now if we go ahead and press apply, we can take a look at the effect of that. So you can see on the left hand side, we've got this rounded shape and it's transitioning really nicely into this angled shape on the right hand side. Now, because we've got this option here, sweep between spans switched on. And so what that does is ensures that as the profile is swept, it does so from a particular span in one cross section to the same span on the next cross section. So if we just select this vector here and press N on the keyboard, you can see we've got one span, two spans. Over here, one span, two spans. And so at the start here, it's transitioning this portion of the span to this portion of the span on this side. And this is why we're seeing this, this line here. And then obviously on the right hand side or the bottom portion of this, we're seeing this span transitioning into this span over here, which you can see along the bottom there. And that just gives you a really nice effect. Let's just reselect those rails. Now this time let's just switch this option off and then go ahead and press apply and then take a look at the effect of that. And so with this option off, the software just takes the cross sections and it just transitions them linearly without worrying about the spans. And so with this option switched on, it's worth noting that this only works when you have cross sections with the same number of spans in them. So for example, if we added in an additional cross section, so we'll take this one over here and then we'll click in the middle there, you'll see that we've added that in. We've got a green node here and that matches the green node of our cross section here. And you'll also notice that we have numbers displayed at the bottom here. And these numbers are almost like a little warning to say that we have different number of spans. And whilst this option is checked, it's actually not going to transition them between the spans and rather it's just going to transition them linearly. So you could go ahead and press apply to take a look at the effect of that, which is still a very interesting effect. So you've got the round shape into that round, this kind of cloudy shape into the angled shape on the right hand side. So I've noted as well, you can actually move those nodes into position and you can really alter and adjust the shape of those like so. We can put that back over into the middle over here. And if we wanted to, we can right click on the node and then we can use this option to smooth it. So if we apply that and take a look at that and by unsmoothing that option, so we've unsmoothed that, you can see we've got quite a little bit of a crease there. And so it's just doing that in a quite harsh transition. However, if we smooth that and then go ahead and press apply, you can see that that crease has now disappeared and we've got a nice smooth transition there. And then if you want to delete a cross section, you can just right click and then use this option here to delete the cross section. And we can go ahead, press apply to reset that. So now we're going to start a new component. And then we're going to select this vector here, shift and select this vector here. And we'll use the option to use selection. And then what we can do is we can look at applying a cross section. Let's go with this one here and press apply. Okay, so you can see we've got a very, very strange result here. And the reason for that is because our rails aren't going in the same direction. Start point over here, start point over there, arrows to the left, arrows to the right. Easy fix for this. If you right click, you can just reverse the rail and then go ahead, press apply. And then you get the result that you are looking for. Another thing that's worth noting is that whilst you do have your rails selected, you can also go into your rail, press N on the keyboard, and then you can make edits to them like so, along with your cross sections. So for example, we could move that up. And then if we just go ahead and reselect our rails and then go ahead and press apply, and we can see the result of those changes all whilst within the two rail sweep form. Right then, so now we're going to look at an example where we're going to look at closed vectors. So let's just go and close out here. And we're just going to go to File, Close. And then we're going to open an existing file. And we're going to look at opening the closed rail example. So here we're going to look at creating a plaque. So we're just going to tile our windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating another vector in order for us to have two rails. So we've got one 
vector here that represents one rail but we need to create a border effect so with that selected let's go into offset offset that outwards by one inch ensuring that we create sharp corners and we can close out and here we've got two vectors and the idea is we're going to sweep this shape in between these two vectors to create a border effect so if we go into the two rail sweep tool I'm going to select this vector here, shift and select that vector there, use this option here to use selection, select our cross section, let's go ahead and press apply and see the effect of that. Okay, it's not quite what I was after, it looks very strange and the reason for that is again we can see our outer rail is travelling from the start point here to the left, we can see those arrows there. Whereas our internal rail is starting here and is actually traveling to the right. And so the cross section, each one of those legs is actually being twisted because one's going one way and the other is going the other way. And this is why we're seeing this very strange result here. So again, quick fix on this, right click, reverse rail, and then let's go ahead and press apply to see the effect of that. Okay, so it's looking better. However, this portion here looks brilliant, but as you get to corners, you can see it kind of twists off in a very strange way. And the reason for that is all down to how our cross section is traveling between each of those rails. Now, I like to use the car on a track analogy. Now imagine we've got a red car on the red track and a green car on the green track. Now, if they're both uh, traveling at the same speed, we know that the car on the green track is actually going to get back to the finish line a lot quicker than the red car because it has a much shorter distance to go. And so if you imagine this part of the cross section is attached to that red car, this part is attached to the green car, as they travel, the cross sections are going to get twisted because one has a much longer distance to go. And so what we can do is we could look at adding in these cross sections in at each of those corners. And so to do that, all we could do is simply click to apply our cross section here. And then what we can do, a real easy way to do this is to right click then on that cross section and use this option to add to all rail nodes. And when we click on that, it adds them to all of the nodes that we've got here. Now it's worth noting that this only works if you have the same number of nodes on each one of your rails. And so if we go ahead and press apply now, you should see all of those corners have cleaned up real nice. We've got nice mitres there. Now, in some cases, you might not actually have the same number of nodes in your two rails. So let's take a look at an example of what happens there. So we're just going to right click and just going to say remove all cross sections here. I'm just going to reset this. I'm just going to clear our rails as well. Now, if we take our center rail, press N on the keyboard to go into node edit mode. Let's just add in a few more nodes like so. So we've added two more extra ones there. And let's just select this one, shift and select that, say use selection, apply this and then what we can do is we can click there and then right click and you'll see that we don't have the option to add to all rail nodes because we have the we have a different number of nodes on a per rail basis which isn't always a problem because what we can do is we can just manually add our cross sections in ourselves in which case you'd simply go in, move your nodes into each of those rails like so until you got the effect that you're after so quite often you have, you're going to have to click and then ensure that it's on the corners click again drag that into the corner click there and drag that into the corner there and then when you go ahead and press apply you can see we've still got a good effect there so that's the way around it if you don't have the same number of nodes there now we're going to look at one final option and that is to fill the center of inner closed vector rails and what that does is it just fills the center here so at the moment whilst this looks good as a frame if we wanted to turn this into a plaque we could look at filling that with material and we've got this option here so we're just going to undraw scale cross sections with width undraw sweep between spans and then we're going to click on this option here to fill center of inner closed vector rails and then when we go ahead and press apply we can take a look at the effect of that okay so you can see we've got a filled flat shape in there with a height of zero and that's nice if that's the effects that you are going for 
However, if you wanted that actually raised, then we're going to have to look at editing our cross section. So what we're actually seeing here is a very kind of small cross section. And if we just zoom into the 2D view, we've got a handy line that goes from one point to the end point, which we can see here. And this is obviously the way that um, we're hanging our cross section around the rail. So we've got this point on the outer rail and then we've got this point here on the inner rail. And so what we're seeing here is almost like a cut through cross section of the actual shape that's being created. And so if we wanted this to have more, more height in there and to turn it into a plaque-like model, then what we could do is we could look at adding a leg to our cross section that goes from here and it goes down and it lines up in Y with the point that we've got over here. And so to do that, what we could do is we could just reset and clear our rails for now. I'm just going to take this vector, go into node edit mode, and then if we right click on that node here, we could use this option to edit the polyline. And I know that the height of my cross section is half an inch and I can see that there and you can see it actually lines up nicely there. So I'll right click just to accept that and here is our new cross section. I'll just press F to fit that to our screen and then let's just go back to our top view there. And once we remember, let's take this vector here and we're going to node edit mode. And we're just going to delete those extra nodes that we added in there. And then we're going to take this vector and this vector. We'll go into the two rail sweep and we'll say use selection here. Then we'll select our cross section and we'll just apply that there. And then what we can do is we can use that option to add to all rail nodes. And then with that fill center of an enclosed vector rail switched on, we can press apply and then take a look at the effect of that. Okay, so you can see what's happening here is we've got this tall part of our cross section is on the outside and it's getting shorter as it goes into the center. Now, if we wanted to alter that, what we could do is we could just right click here and we could just swap the rail order and then go ahead and press apply. And then you can see we've got more of a plaque like shape there. If you wanted to see this a little better, you could also look at undrawing the vectors there to take a look at your model. And so that's how we use the two rail sweep.